You're listening to Where You Live with Gene Sullivan. Welcome back to Where You Live. Christopher has been uh, giving me uh, as a theme today music from older classic older video games. Older classic video games, and I'm trying to think. You know, I, everybody played Mario. Uh, that was the first one. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm afraid my uh, my gaming probably stopped after Mario, so <laughs> I, I don't know if I'm going to be able to uh, identify any others. I give up, Christopher. What is this one? Uh, it's a Donkey Kong. This is Donkey Kong. Yeah, like the second Donkey Kong. Oh, second Donkey. Yeah, oh, so there so you there, go. That second makes a Donkey yeah. Kong. Okay. <laughs> Well, welcome back uh, to uh, Where You Live, folks. Uh, before we get back into our story about FHA, who is uh, putting on new rules that are going to uh, really affect homeowner associations. We're talking about uh, they have their sights on the transfer fee. But before we get back uh, to that, I'd like to let you know we've got a free gift for you. We put together a bi-monthly newsletter called What's New. A lot of what we talk about on the show, we talk in further detail. People we have on the show are contributors to that newsletter. You'll have a list of uh, free webinars that we uh, put on, and you can see uh, from the convenience of your home at your computer on uh, how to live in an HOA, uh, what are the roles of the board, uh, what do you need to know when it comes to homeowner insurance, a lot of great information. We've got over 23,000 subscribers. It's growing. People say it's a great resource. It's yours free for the asking. Give us a call at New Concepts at 952-922-2500. Ask for Lori. She'll make sure that you start receiving your copy either electronically or by mail. Now, uh, FHA, as I said, seems to have a problem with the transfer fee. And the transfer fee, again, is when a person is going to be required to pay typically one to two months of what their normal uh, monthly association fee is, in addition at the closing, and that money goes into the capital replacement fund for the homeowner association. Now, as we were talking in that last segment, we went through a long, long list, and I didn't even go through all of the fees that are uh, there uh, that a buyer must uh pay attention to and pay before they get their first home. There's the origination fee, appraisal, abstract, lenders, recording. Uh, It just goes on and on. And so FHA is saying, you know what? Uh, We just think there are too many fees, so enough is enough. And uh, they also don't have a understanding of the uh, homeowner association industry. One of the other chief reasons why FHA is stating that they are against this transfer fee is they believe that it's just going to line the pockets and enrich the developers who are building uh, homeowner associations. Uh, you know, when the HOA is first established, who, uh, who is the homeowners association? Well, the homeowner association is all of the people that own that property. Well, to begin with, who owns the property? The developer and the developer only. And so I can so FHA is thinking, well, if the developer owns the property, this is going into their pockets. But that's not true. It gets set aside. And as the first homeowner goes in and the second and the third, that amount gets added again and again. Now, all of a sudden, their monthly Uh, assessments being made to the homeowners living there, and they're paying a monthly assessment. And part of that fee is going in to keep growing this capital replacement fund. Why? Because years down the road, it's got to replace, it's got to be enough money to replace the roof, to replace siding, to uh, take care of replacement of asphalt and so many other areas. But FHA has this idea that it is just lining the pockets of developers. They just don't understand uh, what is going on. Uh, The transfer fee. Uh, If you take a look at this, I think this is interesting. Of all of the fees that we talked about earlier that are at a closing, all all of the fees except the transfer fee. I'm going to say that again. All of the fees except for the transfer fees 
go to other entities because of things that they need to do to prepare and make sure that there is a smooth closing. Like I said, there's the resale disclosure fee that the management company has uh, uh, receives because there's extra work in putting together uh, disclosure of information to make sure that the homeowner has accurate information to be able to make the decision of whether or not to buy. The county has a fee to uh, record. And all of these other fees go to other entities. But the transfer fee is the only one that goes right back to the homeowner. Because that's right, it goes into the fund and that of the association. And now that homeowner is a one one hundredth owner of the association or one sixtieth, depending on how many homes there are in their association. And so this fee is going back to them. And what this does is, like I said, number one, it means that uh, they will have uh, money that will be needed down the road for these major capital replacement uh, items like roofs and siding and asphalt. And isn't it much better, instead of paying a few extra hundred dollars now versus thousands and thousands of dollars later in a special assessment? I think so. I think a little bit more early and, uh, and uh, moving forward is a lot better than having to come up and cough up huge assessments. And if you lived in an HOA, and if things haven't been uh, uh, properly funded with the reserves, you know what I'm talking about. You've had assessments. Uh, I know of uh, homeowner associations that have paid eight to $10,000 just for having to have their roofs replaced. Okay? A large, well-funded capital replacement fund goes to the homeowners. A large, well-funded capital replacement account translates into greater equity and value to your property. People look at this kind of funny. They say, uh, some people say, well, I'm not going to own the property uh, for uh, 20 years, so uh, let the next person who buys it pay for the roof. I'm not going to do that. And so uh, HOAs want to uh, not to fund that capital replacement uh, account because uh, they are taking a look at things backward. They think that they're giving money to someone else. But what they are actually doing is they're putting equity into their home. Because what is the value of your home? Well, the value of your home is uh, uh, the value of the materials and everything that was built. But uh, because you are 160th or 1-100th owner of the association, you also own 160th or 1-100th of all the money in the capital replacement fund. And so uh, people uh, that are buying in HOAs now, more so than I think uh, a number of years ago, are beginning to understand that there is value. That translates into value. And so I wish that FHA uh, would reconsider this new rule. Now, at this point, uh, the rules are not published or they haven't been implemented yet. So there could be change. And just like we saw change, I think this is something that would be important. Uh, folks, contact, uh, contact your, uh, your, uh, your uh, Congress uh, representative. Uh, contact uh, the Community Associations Institute. Uh, you can go to www.caionline.com. Uh, we have a Minnesota chapter and a national chapter. They're working hard to fight and kind of push back and try to give some uh, in additional information and a little bit more knowledge to be able to uh, help FHA in some of their efforts. Some of the rules that they've put in place in past make sense. This one, not so much. Well, I tell you what, let's take a break right now. Uh, don't go away. A lot more of where you live back after these messages. <laughs> 